Uh, Kenny's chatting away in the break there. I can't hear a thing because I've got my earphones in, Kenny. All right, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Keith Trace is with us. Keith, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, very well, thanks. Um, what did you make of our attacking play last night? We, we haven't talked about that yet. Uh, the reason we haven't talked about it because there wasn't an awful lot of it, but it, we played percentage football, but you have to do things like that against the French. I thought it was a hybrid approach, which... Yeah, again, I thought worked well at times. The first couple of the first couple of minutes, Evan Ferguson runs down to the channel. He ends up turning and crossing, and there's nobody in the box. But we played we played good football. But I think there's just a little bit of a, a diluted message. I think if Kenny nails down before, especially before the French game, you tell everybody we don't mess around on the edge of our 18 yard box. We don't play because that's Pavard who scores that goal. By the way, that's the French right back. So Cullen playing that ball across our 18 yard box has to see that Pavard is out position. Just clip that ball into the channel. Get Ogbeni running, get Evan Ferguson running. He doesn't. He plays a little a sideways ball, which are always dangerous balls, especially in their own half, and, and we get punished. But in terms of our attack and play, we only really look dangerous towards the end when we start pumping balls into the box. There was no real open play looking good. There was endeavour. Ogbeni was giving Theo Hernandez a hard time, but in terms of actually getting on the half tone playing balls through there wasn't really an awful lot of that Was there was our best opportunity not the one that fell tonight that got blocked by Griezmann and did that not come from playing inside that was like with Bazunu to Coleman was it Doherty at that stage or, or who was it would have been I can't actually remember who oh, Ben got down the right hand side yeah. he dropped his shoulder and drove drove down the right hand side he could have played Evan Ferguson in the second half he didn't Oh yeah. He eventually popped it across the um, Jason, I think yeah. the one you're talking about, he come, came on the inside, the edge yeah. of the box, and it was a, it was a block. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't. Again, did, did it end up in a shot on target? Did the keeper have to no. save it? And it was a block shot. And again, I know I understand. Should have got shot away. Like yeah, it, we're, so getting I think there. That we're, we're getting half chances, but yeah. again, when it's League One versus Champions only, League, that I understand that. Yeah. But the only time we ever looked dangerous was the Collins header, and when we started putting balls into the box. So why not do that? against the French I'm not saying do it for every team that comes to the Aviva but when the French come get the ball out wide Theo Hernandez is not a great defender and we knew he was going to be left 1v1 because Mbappe is up the pitch Could he have been booked for persistent fouling? Is, yeah. like, I mean, is this my GA? Yeah, it could easily, like, yeah. Th- three times pushing somebody in the back yep. that's a yellow card and then you stick Mikey Johnson on him and you go okay let's see what happens now Anyway yeah. Yeah, well, he did. He, he was a bit silly a couple of times. He ran into the back of a Benny, and it was just the physical attributes of a Benny he didn't want. And yeah, look, I think we could have played on it a bit more, but the French had an off day. We were a little bit better than we probably expected. And yeah, again, it's just another kick in the teeth that we didn't get. At. What, what did you make of Stephen Kenny's in game decisions, the subs? So just look at the subs. So Ida's 65th minute, and then that's the triple sub on 77. You have McLean, Johnston, and Brown. And then, of course, Obafemi comes on late. But do you feel he got the decisions? In game, right, Keith? Or? I think his hands were tied a bit. I'd love to see Evan Ferguson stay on down the stretch for the last 20 minutes because we know he's the one that we're all putting our hopes in to hit yeah. the back of the net. But I understand why he was taken off. The workload he got through was was, was massive. He was in quite a, a physical battle with Upa Meccano and Kanate as well. So I, I understand why he was taken off. And he is, he is a good target man as well. We could have got up around him. Mikey Johnson coming on. He's electric in and around. He's lively, isn't he? Picking up second ball. So I understand all the changes. And I, I don't, you know, I, I would have loved to see Evan Ferguson say on it of course but I understand all the reasons they were made you know such a such a heavy workload the, the lads were getting through yeah, yeah I suppose the, uh, you, you mentioned about keeping them on the pitch how, if you if you keep them on the pitch how can you keep them on the pitch maybe, maybe you throw someone up alongside them we've spoken about it, playing with the two down the central area of the pitch obviously Evan came on Adam came on by himself in isolation Now we got Mikey mm. uh, Johnson or Benny either side of him kind of a narrow three for the remainder of the game but I'll probably, yeah, I'd agree with Keith to an extent, maybe keeping Ferguson and getting Adam Eater up alongside him as a two, just to kind of share the workload a bit and hope that maybe something might just drop for Evan Ferguson, probably our best finisher inside the penalty box. But I'd agree with Keith physically, you could tell he was struggling probably five, ten minutes before he was, he, he was, uh, he was substituted. So, yeah, no, I think the, the substitutions were were absolutely uh, fine. I could understand the shame of slotting in right of a three, Alan Brown, attacking player. Alan Brown was and good. He's a goal threat. Yeah. And, and Alan's a, a goal threat. It was a half chance, one across into the box late yeah. on to the back post from James. As Needed Keith suggested, yeah. a little bit more of a cut and thrust down the left-hand side when James came on. It's decent, his delivery's decent, isn't it? And that's shot from that Alan kind of a half chance. That's, you know, that's all it was. Um, Keith, we talked last week before the games about the, the uh, treating the two games separately 
and it seems like they treated the two games as a block basically trying to get the team as prepared and as fresh as they could for the France game as opposed to caring too much in retrospect about the Lafayette friendly uh, yeah but see, that, that was the one thing I, I spoke to Kenny Neaviva about this last night I mean Kenny Cunningham now not Stephen Kenny <laughs> uh, just that we, we should maybe change it up a bit like when Lafayette come we played a very similar formation to the formation we played last night and I just think we need to be a little bit more expansive trust our attacking players because if we can't break the likes of Lafayette down in from open play and look good against them, we're not going to be able to go toe to toe with the French. Yeah. Now we, you could argue that our problem against Lafayette was that we were unable to like tackle them properly and uh, close the ball down, which we were grand at last night. So I, I do think there was an element of like this is still only Lafayette, whereas the the, the points on offer for the tournament uh, raised the the standard of the whole team last night yeah and I think Stephen Kenny will have to I, I said this last night as well I think the standard has been set in terms of work rate I think that's the work rate we need to demand from every single game whether it's France or Eddie Lafia. I think the minimum requirement is maximum effort we got that last night and the French on paper are a million miles above us but we outworked them every player outworked the opposition player they were up against and it brought the level a little bit closer and we hustled and bustled not an awful lot of goal mount action but that suited us down to the ground and the checkpoint was with 20 minutes to go still be in the game yeah. and we were still in the game Do you think that that base camp has been established and that this is something to build on as opposed to a one-off performance That I mean we don't know because the evidence the proof will be in the pudding but what's your instinct? <sighs> I hope not. I, I hope Stephen Kenny, Keith Andrews, I hope they're nailing that down and saying, you know, get the running stats out and say that's the bare minimum every single game. Because if we work that hard against the majority of the teams that we play, we'll get something out of the game. If we start picking and choosing when we want to work that hard, we'll start coming undone again. So if we work that hard against Greece, I know it's June, I know it's going to be hot. Yes. We're going to have to keep the ball an awful lot better. But if our work rate is up, up or there or thereabouts, we will beat the so-called lower teams. Athens experiences hot temperatures throughout the summer months with June, July and August all bringing average daily highs of at least 30, mm. although temperatures of over 40 have been recorded. Yeah, so that's so when I talk about different... Steve Staunton job. Not, yeah. not one on. of us would uh, would perform under those... Uh, no. Yeah. no. That's going to be a different challenge. So, uh, Keith Roy generally in terms of that kind of work rate endeavour, but to be honest with you, I never remembered watching an Ireland team too often in the past and thinking, oh, this lock would work a bit, half, a bit harder. You know, we need a, a harder shift. The intensity levels were phenomenal last night. I agree with that. But that's never been a thing that's held us back in terms of lack of application does it feel like on behalf they, of the players. Does it feel like they're applied to a plan? That's the thing. Oh, it was a real plan. It was a real cohesion. You could tell we were prepared. Good organisation last night. That's what I'm saying. I was, I was delighted to see that. But like I said, the, the Greece game, that's what we're going to be talking about next. So we talk about the Lafayette game. But I think that opening 20, 25 minutes against Lafayette, I was reasonably impressed with how we played in possession of the football. I thought we had a certain element of control against them. I thought a combination play between Will Smallbone and Matt Dartley down the right-hand side was interesting. You know, I thought they looked comfortable in each other's skin. And we worked the ball. We were quite progressive with our passing, particularly down the right-hand side. A real element of control to the game, which I think we're going to need in that in that Greece game for the, some of the reasons that you're saying in terms of the temperatures, etc. So that's what I'm saying. I think he's going to have to flip it a little bit uh, against Greece in terms of personnel and even in terms of the format. But you can do that. We, we, you know, it doesn't mean we, oh, we've got to go 4 3 3 and totally pull the whole thing apart. That back five unit, I think, stays in place. But I'm sure he'd be looking in front of that. You're not sure about the back five, are you? No, not against not against the, the lower teams. And look, against Latvia, I would say, Kenny's saying, you're saying the, the first 20, 30 minutes, probably the first 20 minutes we were good. After we scored the second goal, we took our foot off them, off the gas, and we allowed Latvia into the game. Look at the first goal. It's a brilliant goal. It can happen against anybody. But it was the fact that we, we didn't seem to recover. We looked really nervous all of a sudden. We looked shaky at the back. And there was no real leader just telling everybody to calm down. There was nobody saying, I'll get on the ball and I'll, I'll calm all this down and I'll make people around me calm down. It was just sort of panic stations and we let them back in. And, and look, <coughs> we wrestled the back and it's difficult to do when the tide starts turning on the pitch. We wrestled the back and we won 3-2. But... I, I wasn't overly impressed by what we did. I think we need a few players needed. It was good. In, I looked at that Laffy game initially and thought oh, I could have done without that uh, hole in the head. Really, mm -hmm. it would have been great to have that uh, weak lead up to the French game. But the close we got to it in terms of the players who hadn't had game time at club level, I think it served but, us well. You spoke about Nathan Collins how well he played last night. I think it helped him having that, that game time against Laffy. It was actually a bit rusty, a bit loose against well. Laffy. Yeah, yeah, there was a number of players. So I, th I actually think it served a little bit of a purpose for us in terms of. 
in terms of sharpening, sharpening a few players up you mentioned, for the French game. You mentioned Will Smallbone there. Like, will he? Was he hard done by not to be involved whatsoever, even off the bench? Was it a game for him? I know hindsight's obviously twenty twenty, but like, should he have at least come off the bench last night? He played well against Latvia. I'll give him that. He really did. Him and Dotterty were creating overloads out on the right wing. He was floating around, picking up nice positions. He seems to be the one who can play on the half turn, and he's given us mm. that little bit of interest. But again, you have to take the opposition into account. That yeah. was Latvia, and this is France. So it was deep, deep water to be asking them to go into. Yeah, I think that like they were getting him in the squad. They were giving him a taste of action. They were saying, "Go off and you know come back to us in six months' time." And you're now you're in the mix. But the France game, like he was tried and tested. There was I'd with the exception say, of Mikey Johnson, I think. Yeah, I'd have to say though, he really impressed me against um, Lafayette. Not so much in terms of in possession of football because we've probably seen a lot of him play with the 21s. So that wasn't a surprise. A very talented uh, uh, footballer. But I've always looked at him and think in terms of how we play. You know we can't we can't carry anybody out of possession, particularly in our midfield, and that's why Noy, Malumbi, and Cody don't carry any of them when you haven't got the ball because of their defensive discipline, their tenacity, the aggression which they have. That was so important last night. But I looked at um, Smallbone against Latvia out of possession, and he was he wasn't shirking it. You know, in terms of getting himself back in his defensive shape, physically for me, he looked in a better uh, place and condition than he was maybe a, a year ago. Uh, look, almost looked at him thought he look, looks a little bit kind of lightweight a little bit powder yeah, yeah. so all those signs were good so I looked at him against Lafayette I know quality opposition you're right but I looked at him against Lafayette thought you know what he's impressed doesn't look as if you know what I mean we're going to have to carry him if we haven't got the ball and that's important because when we do get the ball and people talk about a creative edge in midfield as good as Jason and J- Jason Knight Malumbi and Josh Cullen who I'm a big fan of but we haven't got that type of player who can receive the ball under pressure on the half turn and play in those areas. Will Sm- Smallbone probably is that type of player. So I think uh, I don't think necessarily six months to a year down the road. I think maybe Steve might be looking at him, certainly with the Greece game, for the reasons that you're saying and saying there might be he's pushing for inclusion in that starting lineup. Yeah, I think the other thing about the Greece game is that they'll have Mikey Johnson in the squad for the second time and they'll have seen what he can do and he's not a player we have. There's nobody else like him in the squad at the moment. We haven't had anybody like him since McGeady really. And away in Greece, if you need to change the game or maybe you start with him in Greece? I, I wouldn't start on him just because I think possession is going to be at a premium with uh, <clears throat> with the weather being so hot you're going to have to keep the ball and I think Mikey Johnson being a winger he likes to get at people he will lose the ball from time to time and that's in his makeup. I like that about this him This is you saying wrong. that yeah, I, Exactly Look I love that about him so I wouldn't start him and <laughs> it's, what about the Wingers Union? Ah, the, the Wingers Union. I'm out at years now. <laughs> you know, look, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't start him. Like I say, just because it's going to be hot, but he definitely take him off the bench if the game is in the running. We need right. a goal, or where it's it's in the balance. So I definitely put him on, and he, he's a, a huge plus. He's been really good. The, the run he went on against Lafayette when he went in the box and took two or three on. Well, the first hit. time he got the ball under pressure last night, well, he was under pressure, and suddenly, like, there's a little postage stamp swivel of the hips and three yeah, players that, beaten. You're like, wow, yeah. give him the ball. Yeah, but then, you know, don't underestimate made that the ability and I know it as a defender under the cost to be able to give the ball to somebody you know he's got a Keith was probably that type, type of play you know he's going to keep the ball for you 5, 10, 15 seconds not even necessarily to take it 30, 40 yards up the pitch but just maintain possession for a period of time Is there so you can actually recover and get a breather Is there a way that you can in, uh, use that in the team and say don't try and kill them every time you get it I think it's hard to get them in a, a, the, the setup of our team so uh, before last night uh, previously we played the back five uh, three narrow three in midfield really three orthodox central midfielders we generally play in there whether it's the three who played last night, if Alan Brown comes in, he'd be the same. And we play with a front, we've really played with a front two, a striking partnership. Now, if you're looking at Mikey Johnson saying, where does he fit into that? Does he fit into a narrow midfield three with the kind of qualities that we're talking about? No. no. Would you play him naturally as a, as a, as a, as a front two, as a central striker almost? Probably not. He's a little bit in between, isn't he? So it's hard to fit him in. If you're talking about a narrow front three a midfield two and a narrow uh, front three as we did against Laffer brought him on yeah absolutely coming off the inside into the pockets but I think he's he's he's, he's hard to pigeonhole he's that and type a, of, bit a, of free spirit so the role that Ogbeni played last night uh, a version of that except 
you're looking for No, him. last night. Because there was a huge amount of defensive responsibility mm. on Not against France, against Greece. Last night. What I'm saying is against Greece. Yeah, but I wouldn't go with the forward against Greece. So I'd love to. I think we need to go back to that uh, uh, central strike and pair. For me, it's Evan Ferguson plus Chiodosi or plus uh, Obafemi or plus Adamida in the game against uh, uh, Greece. I'd like to see us go back to our two central strikers. Well, what's your Greece. preferred two? Of those four names you just picked, what, what's the four? Or what's your preferred two options? Uh, well, after Chiodosi's performance last night, and I think he's always done very well, Chiodosi, but he seemed mm. to have fallen out of favour a little bit. Prior to the uh, game against kind of Lafia, hadn't got a lot of a game time under yeah, Stephen the I previous three or four Benny games. Right. I think he's better running on to the ball rather than when he's back to the ball. But I think uh, Obafemi, Obafemi and Ferguson, I think are a very good pair. I like mm. them two together. But I think I think Eda and Ferguson are a bit similar. I think obviously Ferguson is a, a, a better player than Eda, but I think they're too similar. I think it's one of them and somebody else. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's the interesting argument for me. But I get a bit more. If you're talking about an attacking threat, create more goal scoring opportunities. How you know how we're going to get more sustained? Uh, pr- I think we get more sustained pressure by playing with a front two because we can go back to front if we want a little bit earlier, maintain possession in the opposition half, and then people can go and join in, and we can get a bit of traction in the opposition half a, a little bit easier with that front two. Now you have to sacrifice one to centre midfield, but that's okay for me. You know, we, we've got our wing backs uh, in the system at the moment. Well, it, it, night becomes a, a 10 or, you know, that's... So you have Malumbi and Cullen or... Yeah. And, and that's fine. That should be fine in most cases. You're not up right. against... A but depends, class, it depends the quality. Malumbi and Cullen last night in midfield too wouldn't have been enough because they got 20, 25 no, yards of space not in, against either France. side of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you're right. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about in terms of little minor adjustments, modifications you can make. You could argue like uh, Malumbi and Cullen as a two, small ball playing as a 10 in behind the front two. Yeah. You know, so that's what I'm saying. These are the small things I'm sure the manager will be uh, looking at depending on the opposition and the challenges well, we're going to face. If you do play small bone in the 10, he's somebody who puts the work rate in as well. He's not exactly a luxury player who'll just say, I'll, get, I'll walk when I get on the ball. Like Kenny says, he'll come back and make it a five in the middle and walk for you as well. Yeah. And then I, I, it up. I think that the point of him being on the bench last night was to see that the level of work rate expected from any of those players in that midfield no trio. No better man to watch than uh, Griezmann. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be, if he could turn yeah, into Griezmann, that would be good. You know, whatever about his technical ability, Griezmann's Sensational. Right in the Sensational, 40 goals, 40 odd goals at international level as well. It's like I've seen him on his backside a couple of times, but mm. in tackle, he's... He's attack with Jason yeah. Malumbi at 50-50, oh, I remember the, the fourth they killed half, each other. like full on, yeah. like studs up. Wouldn't like miss like him on real. the pitch anyway, Griezmann. <laughs> you certainly wouldn't miss him. Like, the set pieces, that, that's another thing that, that kind of cropped up last night. I saw a couple of people commenting last night when I, where I was watching it, saying Jimmy McGrath might have been a man to have in there for the set pieces. There was even that short corner at one point during the game where Josh Cullen tried to play it and you're just thinking put the ball in the box yeah. the big did that, to be fair I thought Olivia was quite good Josh Cullen off that right hand side that out swing across I thought he put in some very good areas the thing was the people don't I was down the side of the pitch like uh, before the game and it's amazing really French team came out and has literally it's landed the joints Griezmann apart unbelievable yeah. in terms of their phys- the height mm. now we're talking about offering a threat at set pieces I was more worried about them at set pieces, like every one of their players six foot and over, like uh, Kanata, absolute giants, Pavard, uh, Giroud, Rabio, uh, six foot three, T- Tushmani comes off the bench, absolutely phenomenal. Who so then up until the, the yeah the uh, the way uh, uh, Collins header, we hadn't won one uh, header in the box. They'd put their head on everything, every corner we'd put into the box. So this is what you're up against. You, t- you talk about their technical ability, how good they are, uh, ball players. But like in terms of like f- physically, they're absolutely phenomenal machines. Mm. So yeah, I wouldn't be overly critical of uh, kind of set pieces. I thought we actually put them into some good areas, but just very difficult uh, to get the better of them in those situations until that, um, yeah, Collins header. Ferguson was a little bit, I don't want to be critical of the lad, he's brilliant, but uh, li- probably a little bit leggy last night. He's played a lot of football as well, which you have to remember. But And then there's the, the, the pressure of a fixture like that. No, Evan Ferguson played in some big games, but certainly wasn't the Evan Ferguson we've probably seen in recent weeks. No, and look, it, playing in the Brighton team and playing into the Irish team, it, it's basically chalk and cheese. You know the way the build up play will happen. He 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 worked hard. He did everything we wanted from him last night. He did look like he could make something happen, but. The one thing for me, physically, he looks like a man. He's only 18 years of age, but he looks like a man. It was either Upa Makano or Kanate. He put on the backside once. He just said, I think he was getting a little bit annoyed because he wasn't getting the ball. So he just left a bit on him and put him on his backside. And I thought, I love that. Especially over a young lad being able to put, him about, put himself about physically. 
And look, he's, I'm very reluctant. I, I think he's going to go on and be an absolute Ireland legend. I really do. But I'm very reluctant to put too much more weight on his shoulders because he's on the front of the programme. We're all getting behind him. And we've seen Aaron Connolly. We've seen Troy Palaf. Troy Parra fall by the wayside with the pressure so I'm very very reluctant to put it on him but he seems to just take to it like a duck to water every, every task that gets put in front of him he's just knocking it out of the way It was a different task from uh, last night I didn't have the luxury of a partner alongside him I know, thought he did well realize. under the circumstances you know? yeah, I thought his hold of play was great a couple of times kind of forced half under pressure we popped the ball out to him Upa Meccano Canate breathing down his neck yeah pushed his shoulder out like Keith was saying you know, imposed himself, made the ball stick, bought us a little bit of time. Now, layoffs were good a couple of times to Jason. I won a few kind of free kicks and, and got a, a breather, which we which we needed. So he did as, as best as he could last night in a, a difficult kind of situation, which he found himself. What did you make of the referee's performance last night? Like, he probably let the game flow quite a bit. There was a few tackles that maybe could have been yellow cards for both teams that weren't given. Yeah, there was a couple of very strange decisions. I thought Theo Hernandez three or four times just ran into the back of Ogbené could have been booked very very easily um, that would have changed things a little bit yeah, yeah well, it would have put him on the back foot anyway there was I one where one joke, Jerry's not letting that one go <laughs> <laughs> we was done the, the we, we was robbed we, we were robbed yeah, the, the one went. weird when I remember I think it was Mawani uh, we had the ball in the French box and Mawani knocks it past Malumbi yeah. and Mawani's breaking and Malumbi fells him and he gives us a fell <laughs> yeah, and I thought right. yeah, some yeah, of the, some of the, the decisions decision, were really yeah. really weird Josh, Josh Cullen got away with one early on didn't he he did he took out Mawani the half line when he was racing clear like yeah. into where half the pitch that could have been a straight yellow um, so just kind of the level things up a little bit the shirt pulling was called every time except when we did it on Mbappe in the penalty area so you know maybe we got away with one there a little bit yeah well I, I and in real time I thought Mbappe just threw himself to the ground but I, I had the benefit of a replay and you're thinking there's not a lot in the short pull but no, when, but the, he, when the short comes away from the body like that and he's been given them earlier yeah option yeah so yeah. lucky um, Brian says I agree with Keith Ogbeni can't play with his back to goal ask the two lads what they make of Knight when he has the ball he's not good enough in my opinion very good off the ball but not near good enough on it I think he's really good on it but I think that last night was a giant step up in class from what he's used to and so he needs to at least be playing championship football next season and uh, ideally he'd be playing at a higher level yeah Jason's an interesting I like Jason a lot to be honest with you but if we think he's going to be like a ball playing central midfield player like a quarterback you're mistaken he's not going to do that for me Jason is a player who arrives onto the scene late and you can see that in terms of the, the kind of third man runs which he makes from central midfield position so he's not one who likes to come towards the ball and receive the ball and get things going from a deeper midfield position. If anything, I look at him, he kind of you want to keep him away from the ball. And when the ball goes from back to front, he's the one kind of joining in. We've seen that already. What was that away game like a couple of years ago that he'd done great a couple of times arriving into the box? He set up Ogbonny for a goal. I think he set up two goals. So for me, that's his uh, strengths. Arriving late, he's got an unbelievable uh, uh, engine in him. But he won't have an effect on the game. If you can't get the ball from back to front often enough and make the ball stick, you're not going to get him in the game because he's the one really, when the centre forward makes the ball stick, he's the one arriving off that or for the next ball kind of in behind. So that's the type of player that he is. So I think you have to be realistic in terms of the qualities which he has. Saying last night, well, he didn't get on the ball, he didn't get us playing in that central midfield area. It's not really his game. For me, he's a kind of specific type of player in that central midfield area, but I like him. Yeah, well, I think that that's it's the problem that we've always had. Cullen, Knight, Malumbi, they're all the same. They all run around, they get you the ball. All different levels of, of talent, but pretty much shame in what they do when they get you the ball. And like we say, we're putting a little bit of hope into Will Smallbone that he's the one that can play on the, in the, on the half turn. But yeah, there's a lack of creativity in the middle. But look, I, I don't take it away from the lads because the attributes they have are some great attributes and they can work well within the team. But in terms of creating and, and you know playing football like a knife through butter, they don't really have yeah, so, that eye of the needle yeah, stuff. Yeah, so that's a good point. So Jerry's talking about oh, we want to play a different way, we want to get away from traditionally blah, blah, or, or whatever. And that's all well and good. But we have to recognise the qualities, the strengths, Jerry, mm. the players that we have in the team. So you look at those centre midfielders, Jason Knife, me, arriving late on the things, Jason Malumbi as well, at his best when the ball goes beyond them. And again, he's he's kind of uh, joining in. Is Josh Cullen the type of uh, disciplined centre midfielder who's going to get on the ball, be that kind of quarterback? I can dominate games as a playmaker probably not so we've got to rec recognise that and we've got to mix 
makes our game up. As much as we want to get on the ball and play more of a possession-based game, we have to recognise the fact we want to get the ball from back to front as early as possible as well and allow these players to join and get the likes of Mikey Johnson as well in possession, uh, higher up the pitch. Will Smallbone, again, at his best in the opposition half and the little pockets. So we have to transition the ball from back to front as early as we can for me to get in that half the pitch to see the, the strengths of those players, midfield players in particular, that we have. So it's that fine balance. I don't think we have to play a certain way. A possession-based game, yet yeah, to an extent, but I, I want possession in the opposition half and the last tour to the pitch as often as possible. And the quicker we can get there for me, the better. If that means we go back to front, all well and good. Remember the ball to Adam, uh, Adam Eda, second half, I think from down the left-hand side, 30, 40-yard ball down, down the side and behind. He raced, Kanate, swiveled, Play the ball on the inside, two passes, James McLean's driving into the box, almost shot on target. Absolutely nothing wrong with that either as well. So it's that kind of happy balance. Yes, we want to play certain more of a possession-based game, but understand our strengths as well and the individual attributes of the players that we have in the squad and tailor a system of play or a style of play that we've been talking about which best suits those players. I don't think it's necessarily one way or the other. Yeah, and the one thing as well, it, the French are coming and the French are very, very good at pressing. You see, look, at the way they scored the goal, it's a bad uh, bad pass by Cullen and Pavard puts it into the back of the net, but it's a really, really high press. So if we recognise that and when we have it, we just chip it over the top of them, eventually that high press, they're going to just get a pain in their arse and say, I'm not pushing up the pitch because I'm just running behind, uh, running towards my own goal. So you just get them set into a way and then you start to earn the right to play. So it's not always long ball. Football. Did we not chip it forward a little bit early on? Was there, when you know, so it, I, it, Chip it! Felt, it. Chip, okay. golf. <laughs> Talk golf here, are we? The Masters, like, heckin' chipping on the around the greens. We did, didn't we? We, we were. We, it felt a little bit like we were mixing it up. We did, we did mix it up, but again, I think there's, there's a little bit of a diluted message that we were trying to play football. We're, we're as good as anybody on the ball in Europe. These kind of quotes coming out is that just in Cullen's head a little bit when he's on the edge of the 18 yard boxes? You know, for me, we're doing it's nil all. It's we're just started the second half. We're in the red zone. Don't concede a goal the first ten minutes of the second half. I mean, actually started the ball quite well. Over like, we head. put them under pressure. The, the mistakes were still happening. That you know, France had come out at the start of the second half and made a couple of mistakes. You're like, actually, this this is going to fall into the same pattern as the first half. That's why it's a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah, but again, the, like every. Every game has checkpoints. The first 20 minutes is a checkpoint. The first 10 minutes of the second half is a checkpoint. And you would have imagined that Deschamps gave the, gave the French a bit of a, a bit of an earful at halftime. So you have to expect a bit of a you know, a bit of fire at the start of the second half. So that pass for me, is, it's just really, really nonsensical. And again, I keep saying it, it's their right back. So just chip it into the space that, the, that Pavard should have been there and just get us up the pitch and just play from there. Uh, Adrian McGrath says, either should have started and we should have finished with Ferguson maybe. Like, I, I, I disagree, but I do think that they were considering that. I think that if Ida had been fit, there's a good chance that, he, like, fully fit and had played and not come off injured for his last game and Norwich hadn't pulled him out of the squad and then he showed up anyway, which is kind of an interesting dynamic that's gone on at club level for him. Um, it did sound like they were definitely considering that and, I don't know, I think that it was... Uh, too big yeah, I don't think it would have had a huge bearing on the game whether Adam had his start or, or, or Nathan I know but the fans want Ferguson the game and kind of he's on the front of the cover like sometimes you know the connection with the team is important yeah and no, I think he will I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Adam either I think he will play a part going forward it'd be interesting in terms of the kind of uh, that kind of partnership Keith was talking about it there is there a natural partnership between him and uh, uh, Evan, Evan Ferguson that, that'd that be interesting I think potentially they could. I understand what you're saying, all right, but I think because Evan Ferguson is so good in terms of his ball retention, actually dropping into the pockets to receiving the ball, I think there's an argument there for Adam's pace in behind and kind of down the sides. And I think they're, really, they're both intelligent players as well. I think potentially there's a partnership there. I look at Obafemi, I know, understand what you're saying, I'd agree with you. That lightning pace, for me, that was probably a reason I probably would have maybe started with him la last night, Obafemi quick transitions, counter-attack, his pace in behind, he spins off the shoulder for centre-half, you fancy your chances kind of 1v1. But I think in terms of his all-round all game, his kind of ball uh, uh, retention, some of his decision-making on Buffemi, I'd question, I think he's still a little bit raw, he's still developing. Whereas Adamida and Ferguson, although very young, 
for me a lot more polished more mature in, in terms of their positional sense and the decisions that they make so yeah I think that's an interesting one Eden Ferguson potentially going forward I think there's a bit of joy in that they're all like 20 22 like night <laughs> night turn coming back to this night turn 22 16, 17 yeah maybe like you're, you're struggling 20, 21, oh, 23, 23 24 still you know below 24 no 24 yeah. 24 you're, you're past it <laughs> you're, you're, old, you're yeah. old over the hill yeah <laughs> oh dear <laughs> Um, but I will say though the French last I have to now look don't get me wrong not, we've t- spoke uh, talked up the Irish performance yeah uh, ab- absolutely and and rightly so but I I, I watched the French warm up uh, and I was I was close to Griezmann and Mbappe were doing a little bit of a passing drill in front of me on the side of the pit and I was looking at it before the game I've never seen anything as sloppy in my life do you remember like your your warm ups going out for a warm up you're warming up. Jared, that's 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 what you're that's trying to do. That's a good point. You're trying no, to warm up. What, what are you doing? What are you doing, Kenny? I know he was. I don't know how you warmed up, but I was very <laughs> conscious of the fact I need to David get my head. Yeah, physically, man, I need to get myself up to. I need to be able. The game's kicking off in twenty minutes. That you know what I mean? Kicking under the ground there. That was I've his legs. never seen Anne like a is swan. Sloppy yeah. as Thames. They're kicking the ball. It was like park football. The two of them, you wouldn't have known. And you might think, ah, oh, when it matters, yeah, when, yeah, when the game starts, that's it. Whoosh, they're going to switch on, boom, get into the zone. But that's literally how they started the game. Were and you a good warm up man? I. Uh, I did. That's what I'm saying. I we're literally, I did as was told. Focused. I literally tried to warm up. I literally, except that time, I remember being up in them, um, Tramere once, uh, uh, Prenton Park in Tramere, and warming up, hitting those long balls, uh, like two the yards, a couple of the defenders, and, and the lad smashed the ball over my head, and I was running backwards, and somebody put an advertising board <laughs> onto the pitch, went straight over, like got their uh, legs in the air. Oh my god! So yeah, I was well warmed up after. And that. no one ever mentioned it. Yeah, but it's amazing, isn't it? And you might think, oh, you're reading too much into that. But I don't know. I looked at that last night. I thought, this is a bit... But that's how they started the game. Mm. And Bappe, absolute uh, shadow. The two full-backs. You, you mentioned Hanan. Mm. Yeah, and I think we got a bit of that 10, 15 minutes into the game. A couple of sloppy passes, wasn't there? They kicked the ball out. Like, they kicked the ball out of play a few times. Ball bobbling over their feet. And things like that. Because there would have been a bit of fear in the Irish players. I said it before the game. And that's not a bad thing. You no. know, I experienced a lot of that in my career. And it really kind of sharpens your it's doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, you have to be on you. And when you get a bit of a sense of that 10, 15 minutes in, hold on, you're having a little bit of joy. They're getting a bit of sloppy. You're putting a bit of a press on, having a bit of joy, winning the ball, forcing a few minutes. Mistakes. You sensed it with the crowd a little bit. A couple of sloppy passes. Well, hello. This might be our night. So we we might get we might be in the game. So I think the the players kind of fed off that a little, little bit early in the game. But yeah, I'd have to say some of those French individual performers were absolutely like rock. Yeah, my uh, my fourteen year old daughter went along. She'd never been to an Ireland game in her life, but she went along to watch Mbappe. And I met her after the game and said, "My God, wasn't he?" <laughs> Yeah, the expectation was, actually, was up there. Like. Yeah, I was really disappointed. Like I got a sense of that. If you side to the pitch, when Mbappe came out to the pitch, the kids, you could hear, you get a sense, oh, it's mm. Mbappe. You don't get that with too many. Messi, probably Ronaldo, is side. I can't think of too many other the last kind of 10, 15 years, can you? And you're getting a sense of that. I kind of sense it a bit last. Oh, this is interesting. But you get the kids, oh, amazing. Here he is. He's in the flesh. We can actually see him. Yeah. This kind of God, you know what I mean? So I yeah. think there's a little bit of responsibility that kind of... Uh, comes up. Am I putting too much on his shoulders and that? Do you know what I mean? No, I don't think you are. Like but your, did your, we not do? Did we not like? Chidozie Benny followed him whenever he was he was making a run, and Coleman followed him, and we did well Coleman, on him. Coleman was brilliant. By I like, think yeah, I only seen big. him open his legs probably two or three times because uh, you're looking out for it. I think, and I want to see how how quick he is because I'm up in the guards. I can see the whole length of the pitch. I want to see stride for stride how quick he is and. I think I only seen him open his legs once or twice in the whole game. It was really, really poor. But body Coleman language. was excellent. Yeah, Coleman was he, he took his he was. The, the way he defended and Kenny will know an awful lot better than me. But uh, Coleman would take Mbappe's space, so he didn't let him get up ahead of speed. He would go and engage him, and when he comes and run, Collins would come across and help him, and he would engage, yeah. slow Mbappe down, and Collins would come and. I think Coleman could play another three or four years as a as a third man and a three centre backs for somebody at some level of football if he wants to. I think that's the, I think that's the way forward for him, and that'll be interesting if he comes in. You're here talking about Nathan Collins going in, maybe centre of a three there as well, and that leads into what you're saying about in terms of a kind of a certain style of play. So if you're going to do that, you need players in key areas of the pitch. It's not all about central midfield. If you're going to play that way, you need ball players in central midfield. You need them across that back three line. Seamus can do that. He's an orthodox right back, isn't he? He's very comfortable driving forward. Nathan, we've seen that already. 
you know, Dara O'Shea left of three, very comfortable in terms of his passing. So, yeah, that's interesting. That'll be something, again, which I'm sure the manager will look at going forward. Uh, Seamus, was it only Seamus when we, position of the team. Was it only when we went 1-0 down that Egan started to drift forward a bit more? Because I, I wondered if that was a wrinkle that they're actually, like, advising. So, obviously, Collins comes out with the ball and drives forward and is, is an an extra man in attack from time to time and everybody understands that that's going to happen and you, you filter back it happened a bit in the first half it obviously happened more after the goal was scored but I, I couldn't tell from watching if it, it looked like Egan was drifting forward a bit more as well and that extra body in midfield is a bit like for everybody going who's picking this guy up well that's not me because he's a centre back So I see John to be fair shame is can, you can talk about in terms of stepping forward into kind of midfield and being an extra body Nathan yeah absolutely John Egan's the one for me for me he's more the sitter he's the holder he's the one who almost allows other players to step forward he's the one who kind of All sits right. and organises probably the least efficient in terms of stepping into midfield and getting us playing and that's all that's okay for me I think you need somebody who's actually happy to sit behind it and actually pull the strings be the kind of puppeteer a little bit yeah Nathan off you go Seamus you can go and join him but I'm staying here Josh you come in alongside me and just keep that kind of bit of defensive sleep, that bit of balance to us even when we're kind of I'm talking about position. attacking here and you're like you know we have to make sure that we're defending <laughs> we're just like, whatever you, you do don't attack too much you have but I, I found that very early uh, in international football in particular because I, I was very limited in terms of ball playing ability I couldn't no. have played in this order's team yeah I couldn't have that was a fact very limited in terms of me, uh, me ball playing so for me well, I, I uh, very quickly understood when we were in possession of the football very quickly I had to think defen- my defensive uh, head had to kick in so when we had the ball I was always thinking if we turn this ball over you're always thinking what if yeah right? at any time if we turn this ball over are we in a decent defensive position can great, we get back great into crack it? of parties are Kenny <laughs> 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 so I, I, them players are invaluable to have ah, look, I'm not, invaluable. Yeah, we love Kenny ah, cheers Kenny good comeback <laughs> we, we do love Kenny we do, yeah. uh, Keith good stuff thanks a million for joining us today uh,